Ulysses S. Grant. The 18th President of the United States, he was one of the greatest horsemen in American history, led Union forces to victory during the Civil War, created the Department of Justice to protect African American rights during the Reconstruction Era, and pretty much single-handedly wiped out the KKK as president, although they experienced a prominent resurgence in the 20th century. He was looked upon unfavorably due to the corruption in his administration, but he's been being looked upon more favorably in recent decades. This video will go over Grant's life, all the way up to just before his presidential run. Grant was born Hiram Ulysses Grant on April 27th, 1822 in Point Pleasant, Ohio. His father, Jesse Root Grant, was a tanner, or someone who made leather. Jesse was an ardent abolitionist, someone who was against slavery. His mother, Hannah Simpson Grant, was a homemaker and was reserved and soft-spoken, both traits that Ulysses inherited. As a child, he showed an amazing ability to work with horses. He first rode a horse when he was two, immensely enjoying the experience, and by the age of five, he could ride a galloping horse standing on one leg. Throughout his childhood, he'd perform stunts that would amaze everyone around him. This love of horses would stay with him throughout the rest of his life. When he was 17, his father wrote a letter to his local congressman for an appointment to the West Point Military Academy, and Grant got in. He attended West Point from 1839 to 1843. It was here that his name changed, and it was by accident. The congressman to whom Grant's father sent the letter to wrote Grant's name, which was Hiram Ulysses Grant, as U.S. Grant by mistake. From then on, he went by Ulysses S. Grant. The S didn't stand for anything. While he was cicaded at West Point, he set a high jump record on a horse that stood for a quarter of a century. He had his first taste of combat three years after graduating in 1846 when the Mexican-American War broke out between, well, Mexico and America. Over the course of the war, Grant served under General Zachary Taylor, who would eventually become president himself, and Winfield Scott. He learned a lot from these officers, and in his memoirs, he stated that he admired and followed Taylor's methods of managing an army. The war itself, though, Grant was against it. He thought that America waged the war to increase the number of slave states. In 1848, after the war ended, he married Julia Dent, and they would go on to have four children, Ulysses Jr., Jesse Root, Frederick Dent, and Ellen Renshaw. After the war, he was sent out west to the frontier. He had to go alone since his salary, he was a lieutenant back then, wasn't quite high enough to support a family in the west. A quick digression here, here are the ranks of the US Army, taken from my video, Every Five-Star General in American History, Part 1. First, let's start with the basic military ranks. There are two main types of soldiers, enlisted soldiers and officers. To simplify things to the max, enlisted soldiers are the soldiers who do most of the fighting, and officers are the ones who manage the enlisted soldiers. Enlisted soldiers usually have specific knowledge about a certain thing, while officers are more generalized in their knowledge. Enlisted soldiers can also include non-commissioned officers, officers that manage other soldiers but are still enlisted. These include corporals and sergeants. Officers include lieutenants, colonels, and generals. For enlisted soldiers, the path of promotion is straightforward. You'll start out as a private, then a private first class, then a specialist, then a corporal, then a sergeant, then a staff sergeant, then sergeant first class, then a master sergeant, then a first sergeant, then a sergeant major, then a command sergeant major, and finally the sergeant major of the army. There's only one sergeant major of the army at a time, though. The ranks from corporal and upwards are non-commissioned officers. They're responsible for their soldiers. After enlisted soldiers, there are officers. If you're an officer, you'll start out as a second lieutenant, then a first lieutenant, then a captain, then a major, then a lieutenant colonel, then a colonel, then a brigadier general, major general, lieutenant general, and finally a general. In a quest to make more money, he invested in several business schemes, but all of them were either scams or failed. He lost a lot of money and he started turning to alcohol. Five years later, in 1853, he was promoted to the rank of captain, one step up from his previous rank of lieutenant. He was one of only 50 who are on active duty. At the time, the US Army wasn't very large. He was sent to a fort in California, and then a year later, in 1854, he resigned from the army. Why? Well, his commanding officer, Brevet Lieutenant Colonel Robert Buchanan, noticed that Grant was drinking a bit too much. He gave Grant an ultimatum, either face a court-martial or resign. Grant chose the latter, resignation. From there, he began seven hard years filled with struggles and poverty. He built a log cabin in Missouri, and it's worth noting that at this time, he got a slave from his father-in-law, who owned quite a few. After a couple of years though, he freed a slave, potentially missing out on $1,000, over $30,000 today, at a time when he was in dire need of money. He farmed for a while, and in 1860, he joined his father's tannery, where leather and leather products are produced, making enough money to pay off his debts from his business failures. Then in 1861, the Civil War started. 
The southern states seceded or left from the Union because Abraham Lincoln just got elected, and they thought that he would abolish or get rid of slavery. Grant signed up to fight, and although he was rejected at first, with the help of Congressman Elihu Washburn, he was reinstated into the U.S. Army. He was promoted to the rank of Colonel, and then, before participating in any combat, he was promoted to the rank of Brigadier General on August 7th, 1861. He was placed in command of the District of Southeast Missouri, but he wasn't satisfied. His force at the time was simply used to divert attention from other forces or to play defense. A few months later, in January, he got permission from General Halleck to start an offensive campaign. The month after that, in February 1862, Grant led Union, or Northern, forces to one of their first major victories at the Battle of Fort Donelson. 15,000 troops surrendered to Grant, and Grant also insisted on unconditional surrender. This gave him a promotion to Major General, and the nickname of Unconditional Surrender Grant. Two months later, in April of 1862, he defeated Confederate forces at the Battle of Shiloh, but incurred heavy losses. The high number of casualties led to him losing command over his army, but in July of that year, he regained control. The year after that, in 1863, Grant defeated Confederate forces at Vicksburg, splitting the Confederacy in half and taking control of the Mississippi River. Next year, on March 2nd, 1864, President Abraham Lincoln promoted Grant to Lieutenant General, and Grant was given control over all Union armies. He chased down Confederate General Robert E. Lee, and on April 9th, 1865, Lee surrendered to Grant at the Appomattox Courthouse. Six days later, Lincoln was assassinated, and his successor, Andrew Johnson, appointed Grant as a general of the army. This rank was different from the World War II rank. General of the Army at this point in time was a four-star rank, not the five-star rank that it would become almost a century later. He was immensely popular across the nation. Even in the South, where Union soldiers were reviled, Grant wasn't unpopular. The stage was all set for him to become president. So, that's part one about Ulysses Grant's life. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video, which will be about his presidency, political views, and his later life. Thank you for watching Explained. New videos every other Friday.